the Denver Broncos haven't experienced enough turmoil this offseason with the departure of Jay Cutler. They now have another dilemma on their hands. Wide receiver Brandon Marshall, who went to his first Pro Bowl last season, skipped this weekend's mandatory minicamp. It's reported that he has requested a trade. For more on Marshall's situation and other NFL news and notes, let's bring in Jeff Darlington. He covers the league for the Miami Herald. Jeff, what is the latest on the Mar Marshall situation in Denver? Yeah, you know, as we continue to wait to find out to see kind of how Denver responds to Brandon's reported request for a trade, I just wanted to run through what he has already given up and what he could continue to give up to force his way out of Denver. So far, he already can be fined $9,079 for missing this weekend's mandatory minicamp. Then the team can also take another twenty-six grand out of his signing bonus. If he does not report by August 12th, the Broncos can hit him up for another $78,000. And this is a guy who's only made $1.5 million over the past three years. So that's a pretty big hit and a pretty big chunk of change. Remember, in this Denver does maintain the leverage, but that still could lead them to, to trade Brandon Marshall out if they get the right offer. Pay close attention to those. Uh, rumors reporting that possibly Baltimore Ravens could be the team most interested. Interesting. All right, let's talk about Brady Quinn. He's doing something a little different uh, with his offseason training. What's he doing? Well, that's what I thought, Jay. I had read some reports where I saw that Brady Quinn was headed off to this mystery boot camp where he was going to be working out two to three times a day. I got intrigued, so I decided to call Brady to see if I could get him to crack to tell me exactly where he was going. He was laughing about it. He never intended to be, like, uh, malicious about you know, hiding the fact that he was going off somewhere. He's actually going to be at his house. He has a gym there and the trainer's going to come, but he wanted to keep it quiet because he's also going to be working out at a football field. I promised I wouldn't tell where that location was, but he's going to be with four different Browns receivers, so he wanted to maintain privacy for him and them. But I thought that the bigger message, and we didn't really talk about this as much, was the fact that Brady Quinn is going to be working with four receivers between now and the start of training camp. That, to me, says that this guy's going to have a really solid edge going into training camp during that competition between he and Derek Anderson. Yeah, definitely advantage Brady Quinn, at least on that front. The Pittsburgh Steelers organization always a little different, and they've taken a different approach to their rookie initiation. Well, what are they doing? Yeah. Jay, you know, I've heard of uh, teams, uh, you know, soaking down a player's uh, rookie's clothes and then putting them in the freezer while they're at practice as a, a way to orientate rookies, but not the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're just teaching their rookies how to grocery shop and cook. You know, they want to get these guys who apparently are used to macaroni and cheese from college to start learning how to cook things like salmon and chicken and finding ways to teach them about the sugar content within the foods so that these guys can finally grow up. It's something that we don't think about. Millionaire athletes, you know, you assume that they know what they're doing when it comes to cooking, but these guys are rookies straight out of college. So they've taught them how to, you know, cook salmon in a in a an aluminum foil pouch, make it convenient, make and make it healthy and you know considering I'm still eating mac and cheese I got to find a program like this for myself <laughs> yeah I need to get off Ryman noodles myself always a step ahead the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, last week Jeff it was great you were sort of facilitating some of the trash talk going on between the Dolphins and for, the Jets they, they were they were uh, actually sending some of the messages through you what's the latest now between uh, Rex Ryan and Channing Crowder anything yes since we talked about Channing last week, I figured I'd give an update. Rex Ryan did throw a playful jab back. Channing Crowder decided to cease fire, said, hey, I'm not going to embarrass this head coach by making him rip a play, an opposing player in the media. But really, you know, he had talked to Tony Sperano and Jeff Ireland about it. They kind of asked him to settle down. But Channing also realized himself, hey, I'm going to quiet down because I'm going to take a different strategy. I'm going to show Rex Ryan who I'm, I am. I'm not going to tell him who I am. And as Channing pointed out, this team gave him a, a big extension, and they also have given him the reins as the starting middle linebacker in this 3-4 system. Channing Crowder realizes it's his time to step up. It's time to become a Pro Bowler if he's ever going to do it. He has the freedom, he has the money, he has the reins. And now Channing Crowder it wants to show rather than tell Rex Ryan who he is. Memo to the Jets interior lineman. Uh, Crowder wears number 52, and he will be coming hard during your two meetings this coming season. Jeff Darlington, thanks for the NFL headlines. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jay.